Hello, sweetest potatoes. Let's talk calendar blocking. Not just your run in the mill calendar blocking where you're stacking your schedule with back to back to back schedules. No, 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 let's keep it simple. Let's keep it intentional. And if done right, we'll only have to do this once. Yes, just once. In this definitive guide, I'll be sharing my personal system that has allowed me to live much lighter and far less stress, as I mentioned in my slow productivity video, and will include an in-depth tutorial on how to build your very own gorgeous block calendar from the ground up. Thank you so much to Shopify for sponsoring this video. More on this in a little. To start, why even calendar block? The whole premise of calendar blocking and productivity is to work smarter, not harder, is to get more done in less time. It's all about efficiency. And to be clear, you're getting your work done quicker, not so you can work more. You're getting your work done quicker so that you can spend more time with the people you love, doing the things that are the most important to you. Let's make that very, very clear. And according to Cal Newport, author of Deep Work, a 40 hour time block work week, I estimate produces the same amount of output as a 60 plus hour work week pursued without structure. And I feel like structure is a key word here. Structure is very important, but it can also be a double edged sword. Without structure, your life is kind of messy. It's kind of chaotic. With too much structure, it can also be a trap. And this is my biggest gripe with task batching, time blocking, or calendar blocking done the traditional way. It is not the most flexible and you can get too caught up in the planning versus the doing. You can get so caught up on not sticking to the plan that you are ridden with guilt and anxiety and that just cripples you from actually doing anything, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of all of this. So I took inspiration from those who came before me and created my very own system for calendar blocking that I'm so excited to share with you guys introducing how to calendar block potato style. We're going to break this section down into two parts. Part one is intentionally setting up your calendar blocks. Think high level, one and done. In theory, you just have to do this once and you can leave it until you feel like you need to revisit, update, or change it. Hence, potato because you just do it once and it runs on its own. Working smarter, not harder, right? And part two will be how to use your calendar once it is blocked. This is where daily to-dos and tasks come into play. Yes, we still need to plan, but weekly maintenance will be significant significantly easier once we set the calendar blocks. Are you ready? Let's get started with the blank canvas, a blank calendar. To start, I broke my calendar down into three main layers and created separate calendars for each. The first one is non-negotiables, which I named daily. We'll get into what all of these mean in a second. The second is play, which you see is down here and up here. And the last one is work. And I separated into three different ones because I'm juggling a couple projects. So the reason why I created separate calendars for all of this is so that you can really batch all of your similar tasks together. And I also like thinking about these different calendars as labels for tasks that you need to do. So for the three layers, you guys can name it whatever you want to name it. But the general framework is one is for non-negotiables, two is for play or just something you want to prioritize that's not within your like nine to five job. And then the last one is your nine to five work job. And to create these calendars, go into settings, you click add calendar, create a new calendar, play. And then if you go back, it'll pop up here. And then you can also change the name of existing calendar. So this I'll make non-negotiables. And once you click back to your calendar, it will be right here. And here with the three dots is where you can customize your colors for the color coding aspect. You can either use the default colors, which I personally am not the biggest fan of because it's super saturated, or you can go in and pick your own. And for my palette, as you guys can see, it is a very, very pastel. And if you guys are interested in getting the hex codes for this, which is here, you can just like copy and paste it in. I'll include a little notion with all of my colors in the description box if you want to check it out. Now that we have the basics down, let's get to blokin. All right, starting with the first priority, which is non-negotiables. When it comes to non-negotiables, take a step back as always and think about what's most important to you. What would you like to do 
more of. I don't think any of us would like to work more. So in non-negotiables, there will be no work. Non-negotiables is all about your personal life. It's all about your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. Whatever it is that you know you need to do to help you operate at your best, block that in bestie because we need to take care of ourselves. So the questions that I ask myself is basically what fuels my soul and what gives me the most energy. Be very, very honest with yourself because there's a lot of things that we may want to do. We may want to do all the things as it pertains to self-care, but there's only a few things that we need to do like the bare minimum. Like if we can do this, I will be good. So for me to operate at my best, I need to meditate. I need to exercise Qigong. I need to be spiritually aligned, which includes reading my spiritual text. Those three were the very first things I scheduled into my personal calendar. So let's say I want to meditate every morning from let's just say seven to eight for an hour. I will put this under non-negotiables and I would want to do it every single day from Monday to Friday. Then I usually exercise Qigong at work for 30 minutes. And then here is fall study. So these were my initial non-negotiables. And then I continue to think, what is something that I wanna work on? I would like to wake up earlier. In order to wake up earlier, I should have a wind down routine so that I can have a morning routine. And the next thing I'd like to work on is sometimes when I'm working too hard or working too much, like today, I forget to eat. So I add in here as well that I want to have lunch and it's blocked on my calendar because it's a non-negotiable and I should eat at a regular normal time every single day. This is basically thinking about what are the things that are most important to you? What are the things that you're trying to work on? What are the habits that you're trying to implement? Put that in your calendar. It can be you want to wake up earlier and do morning pages. It can be you want to journal more. So set a time for you to journal in your calendar. It can be you want to work out three times a week. It can be calling your parents more. It can be wanting to work on your hobby. It can be making time to talk to your significant other if you're doing long distance relationship. I don't know why I'm running out of breath. Whatever it is that's most important to you, add it in the calendar first because this way you're proactively scheduling your non-negotiables first and then scheduling your work around it rather than what I think most of us usually do. And this is definitely what I did in the past where I would put everything down for work first and then trying to find time for my personal life. This is very, very, very important. Moving on to the second layer, which is play. Now, when I say play, I don't mean scheduling every single social event and plan you have for the rest of the year into your calendar. Play is basically blocking off time for yourself or blocking off time to spend with loved ones. It's an open-ended general block of time where you can do whatever it is that you want that you know can feel your soul. If you wanna be specific, you definitely can. But for me, I left mine as row time and row days. This basically Basically to me means I'm not gonna be working. I'm signaling to myself whenever I'm looking at my calendar. If I happen to still be working at seven, I'll be like, oh, right. I should be going home to decompress and take care of myself and my mental health and to do things that are completely unrelated to work. So whether I actually do it or not, I don't really think that's the point. I think this is kind of like where the flexibility comes in is that it is here as a visual cue, but what you choose to do ultimately depends on you and your schedule for the week, which is why I think blocking your calendar like this is great. Now, what can you do? during this time. For me, I use this time to schedule meals with friends, to do arts and crafts, to pick up that instrument that has been collecting dust. This isn't for me, I don't play instruments anymore, but it could be for you. It is to do that hobby, it is to maybe start that side hustle. I know side hustle is technically work, but if it falls out of your nine to five or more like regular work, it could be in this category. Whether this second layer is play or not for you, it's basically whatever you're prioritizing in your life. We all have 24 hours in our day. Let's say we spent eight hours sleeping, eight hours working. There's still eight hours for us to do whatever it is that we wanna do. So I'll give another example. Let's say you want to work on your side hustle. If you really want to do that, think about how many hours every week are you willing to commit to yourself on this side project? Do you want to do an hour every week? Do you want to do a full day on Saturday or Sundays? Whatever it is, pencil it into your calendar so it's like a personal agreement you set with yourself and it can help keep you accountable because it's on your calendar and your calendar is 
something you look at every week and also daily as you're planning, which we'll get more into that in a little. And if you happen to be looking for a side hustle, Shopify is a great platform to check out. They're an all-in-one commerce platform for anyone, regardless if you're tech savvy and experienced or not. It's super easy to navigate and get a store up and running. If you guys remember in this video, I was listening to Tim Ferriss's podcast, interviewing the president of Shopify. And I remember being so inspired and so moved by how much heart and thought went into building this now like multi-billion dollar company. Company, I think and how invested they are in democratizing entrepreneurship, which I think is amazing And they also created this business blueprint for anyone and everyone to use It's basically a 101 worksheet template questionnaire how to for how to start your business it is also what beauty within a skincare and lifestyle channel I'm also a host and producer on uses we use it for our online shop where we curate some of our favorite skincare as well as lifestyle products you can use Shopify to sell online in person as well as on all major social platforms. So if you want to check them out, you can sign up for a 14 day free trial at shopify.com slash Rowena Tsai. On to our last layer, which is work. Oh dear work. All right, so remember guys, we're still high level. This isn't the tasks that you need to do on a daily or weekly basis. You're taking a step back, thinking about your weekly schedule, asking yourself when in the day are you usually the most energized? When is the best time for you to block off time to do deep work? And really scheduling your days around that. So for example, before I traveled this summer, I was on a very good schedule where I was able to block all of my calls on either Mondays or Fridays so that Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I can either film or just really, really, really engage in deep work, whether it's scripting, whether it's editing. I've also found that I do my best work in the afternoon, starting from four, five onward, from seven to 10, I'm like, on it, which is not the best because seven to nine, I want to be relaxing for the most part. I think it comes from me procrastinating and knowing that as we get later and later in the day, there's not more for me to procrastinate. That is why my deep work is scheduled in the afternoon and I have my team calls or my team meetings mostly in the mornings. Just because I'm juggling a few things, I have Beauty Within, the skincare channel, I have my own YouTube, things that is all under Team Potato. And there's also Voice Hugs, my podcast. So I have three different calendars. You can really honestly have as many or as few calendars as you need. This just really helps me prioritize if let's say I don't want to see one calendar, it's not there. If I don't want to see another calendar, it's not there. So in summary for the first, part. The first thing you want to put down on your calendar is your non-negotiables. The second thing is play. The third thing is work. This is what I mean by once you create this once you can leave it. This is basically a system for you to fall back on if you need, because I quote this all the time and I absolutely love it from James Clear. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the levels of your systems. And this is an amazing system to fall back on. So that was part one. Okay. How are you feeling? Do we need to get some water? I definitely need to get some water. <laughs> a little lighting change because it's getting to the time of day where the sun has set and Rowena is still trying to film. Okay, moving on to part two of how to actually use this in practice. So now that everything is set up beautifully, you can just leave it, step away from it, and just don't think about it for a second. So the very first thing I do is to capture all of my to-dos, whether I write it somewhere, whether it's in an Apple note, whether it's directly in Sinsama, I make sure wherever I have it, it eventually all comes into one place and that is in my Sinsama. Once you capture everything, it's all in here. You start looking at your task. You start moving things around that you don't need to do today. These are just things that you must do today. That's kind of how I think of like my daily tasks and my daily to-dos. Once I put everything in place, this is basically the order in which I'm gonna to get my work done. The cool thing about Sinsama is that if you say you want to work on this filming for two hours and you want to put it in your calendar, it will automatically pop up on your Google calendar, which is absolutely
absolutely amazing and that you can do this for everything that you need to do. And in the ideal world, you're not scheduling anything during your non-negotiables, for example, here, here, and here. But sometimes life happens, you need to be adaptive, you need to be flexible, which is why I personally think this system has worked so well for me because it's not shackles tying you down to this thing that you must do, more so it's general guidelines and systems for you to fall back on. All that to say, I hope this video has been helpful. I'll be dedicating a whole video similar to this one, like a very in-depth tutorial walkthrough of how I use Sensama to organize my life and how that integrates into my Google Calendar and how all of this just beautifully works together as a true productivity nerd. I know it may sound like a lot, but it really isn't. These just so happen to be the things that have worked for me and are continuing to work for me. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in next week's video. Bye-bye.